Good evening. Can you hear me? Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Hi. Evening. Welcome again. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome. Welcome again. So uh, we have Jessica Rosales, Diego Melendez, Rodrigo Daniel. Let's see. And Ciro Mira. Okay, everybody, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Today, uh, I'm going to start sharing the screen with you. Just give me a second. There it is. Okay, everybody. Can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, excellent. All right. Um, be welcome once again. Uh, this is Inglés Intermedio, Módulo 3, and that's me, once again, Ivan Doñan, at your service. This is Intermedia 3, and today we're going to have Session 7. And today is September the 14th, 2022. Okay, so let's begin. Today we have basically two topics. Okay, two topics for today. And uh, these are the lesson objectives. The first one. By the end of this class, participants will comprehend how to use present participles and past participles as adjectives. Okay, this is not difficult. It can be a little bit confusing, but with practice, we can do it. It's a lesson objective right there. So let's take a look. What are we going to do? Everybody, uh, this is section 3.3. I'm going to show you the... Let me see here. Just give me a second. My computer is extra slow today. Okay, there it is. Just a moment, please. Okay. Hmm. Okay, everybody, take a look. This is uh, section 3.3. Okay, you have participles as adjectives. So if you look, we have this. Um, participles and adjectives, there's a nice video explained by Miss Jessica. And I want you to take a look at it tonight after the class or tomorrow, okay? But tomorrow is a day off, so maybe tonight is better. So I want you to take a look at it. There's some nice explanation on how to use present and past participles as adjectives. But as usual, okay, what we're going to do today is we're going to um, explain more about it. So adjectives ending in ing and ed, okay? It's the same topic. Take a look, many adjectives end in ing or ed. But before we study this, do you know what an adjective is? What is an adjective? An adjective is a word that we use to describe a person or a thing. For example, let me show you. Okay, it's opening the notepad. Just give me a second. Well, it's not opening. Okay, um, let's just give me a moment. Where is it? Doesn't want to open. That's strange. Okay, there it is. Okay, imagine you have the noun girl. Okay, that's a noun. And then we need adjectives. The adjectives describe the noun girl. What words can we use to describe a girl? ¿Qué palabras podemos utilizar para describir a una muchacha? Can you give me some examples? Mm -hmm. Participants, okay, Rebecca. No. Tall, okay, we have tall. Tall is an adjective. Thing is another adjective. Uh-huh, very good. Chai. 
Shy is an adjective. Good. Another adjective you can think of? Mm -hmm. It's funny. Funny. Okay. Anything else? Beautiful. Beautiful. Etc. Okay. All these words are adjectives. Why are they adjectives? Because they describe the noun girl. It's not just a girl, it's a tall girl, a thin girl, a shy girl, a funny girl, a beautiful girl, okay? So, now that we know what an adjective is, we can study this. Many adjectives end in ing and ed. We have an example. Take a look at the picture. You have two adjectives. One is bored and the other one is boring. So Matthew has been doing the same job for a very long time. Every day he does exactly the same thing again and again. He doesn't enjoy his job anymore and would like to do something different. So we say that Matthew's job is boring. boring. His job is boring, okay? And Matthew, the person, is bored with his job. You have two different adjectives right here. One is boring, ends in ing, and the other one is bored, ends in ed. Two different adjectives. No son intercambiables. Uno se ocupa en ciertas circunstancias y el otro en unas circunstancias diferentes. Somebody is bored or gets bored if something or somebody else is boring. If something is boring, you get bored with it. So, Matthew is bored because his job is boring. Matthew's job is boring, so Matthew is bored. But don't worry, we're going to explain this in more detail right now. Take a look. Compare adjectives ending in ing and ed. You have some examples. My job is boring. My job is interesting. My job is tiring. My job is satisfying, etc. Now, if you notice, all the adjectives finish in ing. In these sentences, the ing adjectives tell you, uh, the ing adjectives, sorry, tells you about the job. Okay. Now, when, how do we know when to use ing or ed? It's easy. ING adjectives describe how something is in general, okay? The job can be boring, interesting, tiring, satisfying, etc. But what about this? If you say my job is boring, then you say I am bored with my job. If my job is interesting, then I say uh, well, this is a different example, right? But I'm not interested in my job anymore, okay? My job is tiring. I get very tired doing my job. My job is satisfying. You can say, if it's not the case, I'm not satisfied with my job, etc. So ED adjectives describe how a person feels, okay? Two different things. Two different things. Imagine that I say, for example, he is bored, he is boring. ¿Qué será? ¿Se pueden los dos casos? ¿O solo se puede uno? ¿O será que se pueden los dos, pero significan cosas distintas? ¿Qué creen? Solo el primero. I'm sorry, Jessica? Number one. Number one is correct. It's correct. And number two? No. Incorrect. Okay. Vamos a ver. Uh, what about the rest? Do you agree with Jessica's opinion? Yes, agree. Zero agrees. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Okay. 
Vaya, de hecho, ambas son posibles, pero significan dos cosas diferentes. When you say he is bored, that's how he feels. Así es como se siente. O sea que ahorita está bored. Pero luego tenemos he is boring. O sea que cuando habla la gente se aburre. Solo dice cosas que no son interesantes. ¿Ok? El adjetivo en ING nos indica cómo es algo o alguien en términos generales. Así es. Mientras que el adjetivo en ED nos indica cómo se siente. Es más bien un estado transitorio. Ahora imaginémonos que es una persona diferente y decimos He is interested. He is interesting. Interested and interesting. Les hago la misma pregunta. ¿Será que los dos están bien? ¿O solo uno está bien? Is the same, is the same case at the mm -hmm. before case. Correct. It's the same case. Ambas son posibles, pero significan dos cosas bien diferentes. Si yo digo, he's interested... Maybe he is in a class and he's like, oh my God, oh wow, I want to know more. Please tell me more. The person is interested. That's how he feels. Así se siente. Si yo digo, he is interesting, es diferente. Cuando esta persona habla, todos le ponen atención. Hey, que quiero ver lo que dice, que interesante. La persona es interesante. He is interesting. That's the difference between ED adjectives and ING adjectives. Okay. Let's take this. A movie. What about a movie? Can a movie be interesting or interested? Interesting with ING or interested with ED? Which one is correct? Interesting. With ING? Yes. Correct. Okay. In the case of a movie, only this is correct. ¿Por qué? Porque una película no siente nada. Una película no siente interés, ¿verdad? Más bien despierta interés en las personas que la ven. Por lo tanto, es interesting. Pero la película no siente nada, así que no puede ser interested, ¿verdad? So, you have to be careful right there. Now, um... You say, I'm bored with the job. I'm not interested in my job anymore. I get very tired doing my job. I am not satisfied with my job, etc. In these sentences, the ED adjective tells you how somebody feels about the job. You have another example. Take a look at this. We have the class, the lesson, okay? You see, this teacher right now is teaching this young lady. The lesson or the class is confusing, okay? And the student is confused. She doesn't understand or she doesn't understand completely. That's the difference, okay? The lesson is confusing. Susie is confused. Before we continue, Do you understand? Yes, teacher. Okay, great. You are not confused. The lesson is not confusing. Okay, let's see uh, some more examples. I have more examples for you here before we do an exercise. You have interesting, interested. You have this. Rosa thinks politics is interesting. Politics parece una palabra en plural, pero no lo es en realidad. Por eso dice politics es. Así es el nombre del tema o materia en el caso. Rosa thinks politics is interesting. When you say interesting, you're talking about politics. Interested. Rosa is interested in politics. Now, who is interested? Rosa. Did you meet anyone interesting at the party? ¿Conociste a alguien interesante en la fiesta? 
Are you interested in buying a car? Hmm? Are you interested in buying a new computer? Are you interested in buying a cell phone? Another example, surprising and, let me see this, give me a moment, please. Boom, it should be surprised, sorry. Okay, you have surprising and surprised. Surprising, it was surprising that he passed the exam. Cuando decimos surprising aquí, ¿a qué nos referimos? ¿Qué fue sorprendente en este caso? Uh -huh. El examen sorpresa, ¿Qué hubo el examen. No exactamente. Si vemos la oración, dice, vamos a hacerlo un poquito más grande porque ahí, por la cantidad de texto quedó pequeñita la letra. It was surprising that he passed the exam. Kimberly, ¿qué es lo que nos sorprende? Eh, pas haber pasado el examen. Ajá, el hecho que eh, esa persona pasó el examen. A lo mejor no estudió nada, pero pasó. Es lo que es sorprendente. It's surprising. No es la persona lo que es sorprendente, ni es el examen lo que es sorprendente, sino el hecho que lo haya pasado. Lo que nos dejó a todos. Yeah. It's surprising. What about surprised? Everybody was surprised that he passed the exam. Ok. Los compañeros son los que se quedaron. Mira, pasó. Ok, everybody was surprised that he passed the exam. Disappointing, right? Disappointing. The movie was disappointing. Decepcionante, right? We expected it to be better. What about disappointed with ED? We were disappointed with the movie. We expected it to be better. So the movie was disappointing. And we watched the movie, were disappointed. Okay. La película era decepcionante. Y nosotros que la vimos, salimos decepcionados. Okay. Two different situations. Then you have shocking. <gasps> the news was shocking. Shocked. I was shocked when I heard the news. Oh my God. That's the difference right there. We're going to do an exercise right here. Okay, and for this activity, I'm going to create the breakout rooms. Okay, your turn. Complete the sentences for each situation. You have to use the word in parenthesis plus ing or ed. The she says move, but she, movie, sorry. The movie wasn't as good as we had expected. So you have disappoint. Okay. The movie was. Como nos quedaría? Vamos el primero juntos. The movie was. Using this. Kimberly? The movie was a good idea. Uh, the movie was disappointing. The movie was disappointing with ING, porque así era la película, decepcionante. And we were, who can help me with this? Utilizando esto mismo. We were, ¿cómo nos sentimos nosotros después de ver la película? Ajá, ok, Kim. We were disappointed by the movie. We were disappointed by the movie, correct. So that's what you need to do. I want you to take a look at the prompt in parentheses, and then you have to use it to uh, build or construct an adjective in ED or ING, okay? You're going to be working in the breakout rooms. Okay, we're going to make five groups right now. Oops, hey, okay, let's see. I need to create five groups. Here we go. In the first group, we have Marvin Josep and Rebecca Estefania. Room two, Nady Ivis and Sulma Beatriz. 
Group three, Ciro Mira and Jessica Rosales. Group four, Diego Meléndez and Rodrigo Daniel. And in group five, Kimberly Nolasco and Rodrigo Antonio Meléndez. Okay. So everybody, I'm going to open the breakout rooms now. Please join and I'm going to send you a screenshot to the WhatsApp chat. Okay, let's do this. No puede ingresar. Can you hear me? No, no me aparece la ventanita. Ah, de verdad. Mm -hmm. tal, tal vez si me saco me vuelve a poner. Quiero ver. Yo sé que no me sale. Lo voy a pasar a otro y de ahí lo voy a poner siempre en el 5. Rodrigo Antonio, ¿verdad? Vamos a pasar al 1. Ahora sí. Hoy sí le sale. Vaya, lo voy a mover al 5. Le sale. Yeah, gracias. Ok, gracias. bueno. Ok, everybody, if you check your WhatsApp chat, ok, you will find the exercise right there. I'm going to start joining the groups. Open exhausting. Sí, exhausting. 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 Porque está hablando del sujeto primero. Uh -huh. Y en uh -huh. la segunda, at the end of the day, work, Anna is exhausting. Exacto. Let's see. Anna works 12 hours a day, but she enjoys her job. Okay. She enjoys her job, but it's often exhausting. It's with ED or ING. ED. Okay, I you have G. you have different opinions. You don't agree. <laughs> okay, Rebecca says ING and Marvin <laughs> says ED. Okay, let's take a look. Cuando dice she enjoys her job, but it al decir it nos referimos al trabajo. Entonces es ED or ING. Vamos a ver. Uno tiene la razón. <laughs> Ahí. So it's often. ED. ED. En Rebeca says ING. The answer is the job is exhausting with ING. Porque estamos hablando del trabajo. Estamos refiriéndonos okay. a cómo el trabajo es en general. Entonces, cuando hablamos de cómo es algo en general, vamos a ocupar el adjetivo en ING. Si vamos a referirnos a cómo se siente alguien o el estado en el que está, por lo menos temporalmente, entonces es ED. ¿Cómo sería okay. el, la segunda parte? At the end of a, work's day, a day's work, I'm sorry, Anna is... Excited. Uh, but not excited, exhausted. Exhausted. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Exhausted. I see, ¿verdad? Se siente super cansada. Okay, she's exhausted. Okay. All right. I'm going to jump into a different room now. See you later. See you later. See you later.
Ajá, como ya está el verbo. Hello, ladies. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hemos entrado un poco tarde y entendemos poco, fíjese. Ah, de verdad. Bueno, aquí sí, estamos tengo para ayudar. Ah, ok, no problem. No se preocupen, aquí estamos para ayudar. Vamos a ver en cuál van. En la dos. En la dos, vaya, veamos. La explicación en general es que los adjectives que terminan en ing se utilizan para describir cómo son las cosas en general. Así son. Mientras que los adjectives que terminan en ed nos ayudan, bueno, describen más bien cómo se siente alguien o el estado en el que está algo, ¿verdad? Digamos, el estado temporal de algo. Decimos, Anna works 12 hours a day, but she enjoys her job. And then you have exhaust. She enjoys her job, but it's often, we're talking about the job. It's often. Será ex exhausting or exhausted? Exhausted. Okay. Uh, exhausting just... es porque... Uh -huh. Digo que era sobre el trabajo, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. y, Estamos y hablando del trabajo. Es cómo se siente la persona. ¿verdad? Así es, exactamente. Entonces, she enjoys her job, but it's often exhausting. Exhausting. So, uh -huh. at the end of a day's work, Anna is exhausted. Exhausted. Uh -huh. That's right. Así es como va esto. Uh -huh. Okay. Wow. Okay. Now okay. you continue. Okay, teacher. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. See you later. Sí, lo lo corroboramos con vos después. Okay, okay, no problem. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hi, teacher. Hey everybody, welcome. Okay. <laughs> um, do you have number three? Yes. Okay. It has been raining all day. Present perfect continuous. I hate this weather. You, you have in parenthesis the press. So this weather is? Depressing. Depressing, correct. This weather makes me? Depressed. Depressed with E D. Right? Yeah, yes, it is. And then you have letter C. It's silly to get. Uh -huh. Then the letter C is the depressing too. Depressing. E D or I N G. I N G. I N G. In this case yeah. it's E D. E D. Uh huh. This I es tonto deprimirse, deprimirse por el or el clima, uh, verdad? Uh -huh. It's okay. silly to get depressed because of the weather. Okay, mm -hmm. depressed. Depressed. Okay. Depressed. Okay. Good. Okay. I'm going to go into Thank a different. You, teacher. You're welcome. Okay. See you in a few minutes. Hello, Rodrigo and Diego. Can you hear me? Hello, yes. Okay. Do you have number five? Have you finished the exercise? Yes, yes, teacher. Okay. What about number five? No les pregunto la cuatro porque ya vi que me equivoqué y era la misma de la uno. <laughs> okay, number five. Claire is going to Mexico next month. She has never been there before. So... It will be an exciting experience to for her. Exciting experience for her. Correct. Letter B. Going to new places is always exciting. 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 Correct. And she is really excited. Excited about going to Mexico. About going to Mexico. Very good. I'm going to go into a different room now. See you in a few minutes. Okay, teacher. Okay. 
ayuda mucho. Hello. Sí, gracias. Este maestro, no digamos nada. <risa> ya entró, ya entró. <risa> ok. Uh, do you have number five? Yes. No les pregunto la cuatro porque ya vi que me equivoqué y la repetí. <risa> Mejor, practicamos dos veces. Okay, number five. Claire is going to Mexico next month. She has never been there before. So, letter A, it will be an... Rodrigo o yo. Oh. Ladies first, okay. Oh, eso conviene, está bien. Entonces, la pregunta, it will be an exciting experience for her. Exciting experience for her. Letter B, going to new places is always... The same. The same. Exciting. Ex exciting huh? In ING. And let her see. She is really excited. 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 ED. About, About going to Mexico. Good. We're going to close the breakout rooms now. See you in one minute. See you there. Okay, everybody. We're going to close the breakout rooms. See you in one minute. Okay, welcome back everybody. Number two, Anna works 12 hours a day, but she enjoys her job. Letter A, volunteers, please. Sulma. Okay, uh, she enjoys her job, but it's often exhausting. She enjoys her job, but it's often exhausting. exhausting. Correct, exhausting. very good. And letter B, Sulma? Letter B, at the end of, excuse me, at the end of a day, work, and is exhausted. Exhausted, correct. Exhausted. Yes, at the end of a day's work, Anna is exhausted. Very good. Thank you, Sulma. Number three, volunteers, please. Alina, volunteer. Mm hmm. Kim, it has been raining all day. I hate this weather. This weather is depressing. This weather is depressing. Uh huh. Letter B. You continue, Kim. <laughs> okay. This uh -huh. weather makes me, de makes me depressed. This weather makes me depressed with ED. In letter C. Mm -hmm. It's silly to get depressed because of the weather. It's silly to get depressed because of the weather. Que dice ahí, es, es tontito deprimirse por, por el clima. Okay, so it's silly to get depressed because of the weather. Very good. Thank you, Kimberly. Uh, number four, we're going to skip it because I just realized it's the same example. Okay, es el mismo ejemplo de principio, así que ahí está. Disappointed, disappointed. Igual que la número uno. I'm sorry. <laughs> And number five, volunteer, please. Different person this time. Me pareció ahí que Ciro quería participar. Parece que vi que levantó la mano por ahí. No sé si todavía tiene el ánimo para la número cinco. Ok, Ciro. Claire. Mi, mi modo. <laughs> Claire. <laughs> oye, tú. <laughs> Claire is going to Mexico next month. She has never been there before. 
So? Dice a number four o number five, teacher? No, number five. Es que la número cuatro es la misma número uno. <laughs> okay. Ahí se me equivoqué. Okay, the number five, mm -hmm. I will be on excited. Okay, it's it. It will be? M-E-D. Aha, uh -huh, but when you say it, we're talking about an experience. Yeah. So we say it will be an? Excited. E-D or I-N-G? E-D. E-D. Let's take a look. It will be an exciting experience for her because we're talking about the experience. Estamos okay. hablando de la experiencia. De, de ella, ok. Del, ajá, de la experiencia, no, no de Claire, sino más bien de la experiencia. Ok, letter B. Going to new places is always... Exciting. Exciting. Yes, it's the experience of going to new places. And letter C. She is really... Excited. Excited with ED about going to Mexico. Yes. Good. Everybody, thank you for your participation. And now we have to go on to the second topic today. I promised yesterday. So by the end of this class, participants will learn to use relative clauses in order to join two ideas into one. Okay. What is this? Relative clauses with who? Which and that. Ayer tenían algunos compañeros, tenían dudas sobre el ejercicio 3.10, ¿verdad? De la plataforma. Ahorita vamos al tema ya de lleno. ¿Qué dice ella? I can speak six languages. Imagine that, six languages. So, you have two sentences right here. I met a woman. That's sentence number one. Sentence number two. She can speak six languages. Now, why do we use relative clauses? Because with relative clauses, you can join two sentences into one. She, you replace it with who, the relative pronoun who. And now you have one sentence. I met a woman who can speak six languages. Conocí a una mujer que puede hablar seis idiomas. Okay. You have two sentences. But when you use a relative clause, you have only one. Dos oraciones se convierten en una, gracias a esta palabra, who. Second example. Jack was wearing a hat. Sentence number two. It was too big for him. Le quedaba muy grande. It was too big for him. Now, it, you can replace it with that or which. So. You have this sentence. Jack was wearing a hat that was too big for him. Llevaba un sombrero que era muy grande para él. Or Jack was wearing a hat which was too big for him. Técnicamente significa lo mismo. Okay. Llevaba un sombrero que era muy grande para él. Y así dos oraciones se convierten en una. That's the relative clause. Now, how do we use it? Who is for people, only people, not things, okay? Only people. You have some examples. A thief, what is the meaning of thief? Okay, a thief is a person who steals things, okay? Un ladrón es una persona que roba cosas, okay? A thief is a person who steals things. Second, uh, Example, it's a question. Do you know anybody who can play the piano? ¿Conoces a alguien que pueda tocar el piano? The man who called didn't give his name. A man called, but he didn't say his name. Okay, so the man who called didn't give his name. El hombre que llamó, no me dijo su nombre, no dio su nombre. The people who work in the office are very friendly. Okay, the people who work in the office are very friendly. Now look, who in la primera se refiere a the thief. Who in la segunda se refiere a anybody, que es una persona siempre. Who in la tercera se refiere a the man. Who in la cuarta se refiere a the people. En cada uno de los casos, 
utiliza who. ¿Por qué? Porque nos estamos refiriendo a personas. Si no es una persona, no podemos ocupar who. ¿Qué vamos a ocupar? Which. Which is for things, but not for people. ¿Ok? First example. An airplane is a machine which flies. Un avión es una máquina que vuela. Emma lives in a house which is a hundred years old. Okay. Don't use which for people. Okay, remember, which is only for things. Example, do you remember the woman who played the piano at the party? This is good. But if you say, do you remember the woman which played the piano at the party? This is incorrect. Okay, remember who is for people and which is for things. But we also have that. ¿Cuál es la ventaja de that? That is for people or things. Si usted dice, bueno, aquí no sé si voy a ocupar who o si voy a ocupar which. Así que, bueno, podemos ocupar that, porque that es para los dos. Así que puede ocuparlo. Ahora bien, algo que tengo que explicar es que por lo menos al nivel que vamos a ver las relative clauses, eh, digamos, es el nivel más superficial que hay, digamos, de relative clauses, porque el tema es un poco más complejo, de hecho. Existen varios tipos de relative clauses. Entonces, ahorita lo que estamos viendo son defining relative clauses, pero existen las non-defining relative clauses, solo que ese es un tema para otro día, digamos, para otro nivel, no para este. En este caso, como estamos viendo, defining relative clauses, esta regla es válida. Se puede ocupar that para personas y para cosas. ¿Ok? Uh, cuando son non-defining, que lo veremos algún otro día, si soy yo su profesor otra vez, bueno, facilitador otra vez, entonces vamos a ver que esto ya tiene ciertas restricciones, pero por el momento no hay restricciones. That is for people or things. Example. An airplane is a machine that flies. Emma lives in a house that is a hundred years old. A thief is a person that steals things. Do you know anybody that can play the piano? The man that called didn't give his name. The people that work in the office are very friendly. Entonces, podemos ocupar that, no importa que sea una persona o una cosa, se puede también. Pero veamos. For people who is more common than that. A pesar que podemos ocupar that, siempre es más común utilizar who. Example, do you know anybody who can play the piano? This is good. It's more common. Do you know anybody that can play the piano? It's also good, but it's less common. Okay. Before we continue, do you have any questions? ¿Alguna pregunta antes que continuemos? No questions? No question. Clear as water. From Maselwate River. <laughs> okay. Como el chocolate. Como el chocolate, como la horchata. Ok, exercise. Vamos a ver. Sin, ir, sin irnos a los breakout rooms, vamos a hacer este ejercicio. Your turn. Choose from the boxes and write sentences. Follow the example. ¿Qué va a hacer acá? Le voy a dar un ejemplo. Number one, a thief, un ladrón. Okay. A thief is a person who steals things. So a thief is a person who, letter F, steals things. You need to connect the two parts of the sentence. But you have to include this, is a person who. En cada uno le va a poner esto, is a person who. ¿De acuerdo? Vamos a ver. What about number two, a butcher? What about a butcher? If you have questions about the vocabulary, ask me. Si tienen preguntas del vocabulario, puede consultar. Butcher means carnicero. Okay, so a butcher is a person who sells meat, letter H, correct. A butcher is a person who sells meat. Como pueden ver, los relative clauses son muy útiles para dar definiciones. Si un niño le pregunta, mire, ¿qué, 
What is a butcher? Ah, ya le dice usted, a butcher is a person who sells meat. Ajá. And what is a thief? Ah, a thief is a person who steals things. ¿Verdad? Muy útil para dar definiciones. What about number three? A musician. Letter D. Play a musical instrument. Okay, but uh, Ciro, can you tell me the complete sentence? It's a, a musician. It's a... It's is who is a person who is a who person who plays a music a musical instrument a musician is a person who plays a musical instrument correct a musician is a person who plays a musical instrument if you play the guitar you're a musician if you play the piano you're a musician good what about number four a patient when you go to a clinic or a hospital, Kimberly. Okay, a patient is a person who is sick in the hospital. A patient is a person who is sick in the hospital. Correct. Okay, that's good. What about a dentist? Volunteers, please. Let up be. Okay, Ciro. Uh, Please, what is a the complete dentist, sentence? A dentist who? Uh, careful, careful. You need to use is a person who. Okay. Uh -huh. the, a dentist is a person who uh, take care of your teeth. Okay. A dentist is a person who takes care of your teeth. Correct. Okay. A dentist is a person who takes care of your teeth. A dentist is a person who takes care of your teeth. Great, thank you. What about a fool? A fool. Josue, please, what's the sentence? A fool who... Wait, wait, a fool that, is? A fool is a person who uh -huh. does foolish things. A fool is a person who does foolish things. Así como decía Forrest Gump en la película, he said. Tonto el que hace tonterías. Okay, a fool is a person who does foolish things. Mm -hmm. Bueno, así decía el de la película, el del libro nunca dice eso. Aquí tengo el libro, lo, <laughs> lo leí y nunca dice eso. Okay, so a fool is a person who does foolish things. What about, uh, thank you, Josué. What about number seven, the opposite, a genius? Nady. Um, a genius is a person who is extraordinarily intelligent. Correct. A genius is a person who is extraordinarily intelligent. Very good. Thank you, Nady. And the last one, you have a picture, a liar. What about number eight? A liar. Kimberly. Oh, well, Osulma. Okay. Bueno, no sé. Uh, uh, a liar is a person who doesn't tell the truth. Mm -hmm. A liar is a person who doesn't tell the truth. O sea, un mentiroso es una persona que no dice la verdad. That's a liar. Like the movie, Liar, Liar. Have you seen the movie Liar, Liar with Jim Carrey? Buena película. <laughs> yeah. Okay. A liar is a person who doesn't tell the truth. Good. Excellent. Next exercise. 8.51. Esta clase yo no la siento, se va volando. Complete the sentences with who or which. What do you have? Veamos acá. Number one. Volunteer, please. Tiene que leer la oración entera con who or which. Remember, who is for people, which is for things. Sulma. I meet a woman uh, who can speak six languages. I met a woman who can speak six languages. Okay, good. Thank you. What about number two? Kim. Okay, it's what's the name? of the name who just started working there in your office. Correct. 
Very good. What's the name of the man who just started working in your office? Good. Number three, raise your digital hand. Ciro. Okay. What's the name of the river which flow through the town? What's the name of the river which flows through the town? Correct. Very good. What about number four, Nady? Um, what is the picture which was hanging on the wall? Where is the picture which was hanging on the wall? Correct. Very good, Nady. Uh, number five, raise your digital hand, please. Vamos, participemos. Siempre escucho las mismas voces. Siempre los mismos, los mismos. Veamos. Rebeca. Do you know anybody who wants to buy a car? Do you know anybody who wants to buy a car? Correct. Very good. Okay. Participants, please. Veamos. Algunos les conozco poco la voz. Okay. Kim wants to participate. You okay. always ask questions okay. which are difficult to answer. Okay, uh, okay, Marvin. <laughs> you always ask questions which are difficult to answer. Okay, good. Um, Josue, number seven. I have a friend who is very good at fixing cars. I have a friend who is very good at fixing cars. That is correct. Very good. Por ahí vi que Rodrigo levantó la mano. Number eight. Rodrigo, did you want to participate? Ahí vi que levantó la manita. Yes, uh, I think okay. everybody who went to the party really enjoyed it. I think everybody who went to the party really enjoyed it. Correct. Very good. And number nine, we're going to give Kim uh, the chance because she wanted to participate. So Kim, number nine. Okay, thank you. Uh, is why does he always wear clothes which are too small for him? Correct. Why does he always wear clothes which are too small for him? Good. Very good. Thank you, everybody. We have one final exercise. Yeah, we still have time. Vamos. Your turn. Right or wrong, correct the mistakes. Bye. ¿Qué vamos a hacer acá? Tienen nueve oraciones. Oh, ¿Por qué hablamos español? Let's speak English. You have nine sentences. Some sentences are correct. Some sentences are incorrect. You need to read the sentences and check if the sentence is correct or not. If the sentence is not correct, you need to tell me the correct form. Okay? What about number one? A thief is a person which steals things. Is it correct? Rodrigo wants to participate. And then Nady for number two. It's incorrect. Incorrect. Okay. What is the correct form? A thief is a person who steals things. Yes. A thief is a person who steals things. Correct. Very good. Number two, Nady. An airplane is a machine that flies. Is it correct or incorrect? It's correct. Correct. Let's check. That's right. This sentence is correct. Great. Thank you. Number three, volunteer. Josue, a coffee maker is a machine who makes coffee. Is it correct? No, correct. It's not correct. What is the correct form? A coffee maker is a machine um that make coffee yes a coffee maker is a machine or, or that which, which or make. which makes coffee mm -hmm. good great that's the answer very good number four volunteer please mm -hmm. rodrigo is correct Okay, what happened to the money that was on the table? Rodrigo says it's correct. Let's check. It is correct. Very good. Thank you. Number five, volunteers. 
Kim, I don't like people which never stop talking. It's incorrect. Incorrect. What is the correct form? The correct form is I don't like people who never stop talking. I don't like people who never stop talking or I don't like people that never stop talking. Very good. That's the answer. Great. How about number six? Who wants to go? Ciro, I know somebody that can help you. It's incorrect. Incorrect. Are you sure? I know, I know somebody who can help you. Bueno, lo que me dijo está bien. No hay ningún problema con la oración que me dio. Pero estamos ocupando that. Y that se puede ocupar para las personas y para las cosas. Por lo tanto... But, but, the, but the more common is a... Ah, ha, that is correct. Ok, en eso estamos de acuerdo. Pero okay. la verdad es que la oración está bien. Ok, aunque lo que usted me dijo es más común. Eso tiene toda la razón. Ok, I know somebody that can help you or just as Ciro said, I know somebody who can help you. That is good. Very good, very good. How about number seven? Who wants to participate? Rodrigo, again. Okay, Rodrigo, I know somebody who works in that store. It's correct. It's correct. Yeah, totally. It is correct. Very good. Uh, number eight. This is a command. Correct the sentences who are wrong. Is this correct or incorrect? Volunteer, please. Mm -hmm. Kim. Is incorrect. Incorrect. What is the correct form? The correct form is correct the sentence which are wrong. Correct, because we're talking about sentences, not people. So, yeah, correct the sentences which are wrong or correct the sentences that are wrong. Okay, very good. Thank you, Kim. And number nine. Who wants to try number nine? It's inco incorrect. Okay, Ciro says it's incorrect. My neighbor bought a car who cost $30,000. Ciro says it's incorrect. What is the correct form, Ciro? My neighbor bought a car which cost $30,000. Okay, my neighbor bought a car which cost $30,000. Great. Okay, very good. All right. Parece que está bastante claro este tema. Estoy muy satisfecho it's con los resultados. It's very easy. It's very easy. Mm -hmm. It's very easy. Como les not comentaba, it's not complicated. Por lo menos um, a la altura que va este tema, sí es bastante simple. Eh, digamos hasta aquí. Pero como les mencionaba, relative clauses son, eh, hay más al respecto y hay otras cosas que son un poquito más complicadas. Pero por lo menos hasta el nivel en que lo llevamos en esta clase es, digamos, lo más básico y lo más sencillo. Por lo pronto está bastante facilito. That's right. Ok, antes que terminemos, eh, acuérdense que según las indicaciones que aparecen en el grupo de WhatsApp, ¿verdad? Um, para el viernes tendría ya que estar completado para el viernes antes de la clase si no me equivoco, creo que esa es la instrucción tiene que estar completado ya el trabajo de la plataforma hasta la unidad 3 y quiero ver y el examen, el midterm, aquí dice les recuerdo que ya iniciamos la segunda semana de clases y que para el día viernes antes de la clase tiene que tener completada la sesión 3 y el examen medio curso aprobado con más del 80%. La plataforma está activa 24-7 para que puedan trabajar. El día de mañana ya sabemos que no hay clases por ser 15 de septiembre. Uh, habíamos dicho que íbamos a tener la clase el viernes, pero por disposiciones eh, del gobierno aparentemente no habría clase, pero no estoy asegurándolo porque no tenemos eh, digamos una confirmación oficial por parte de Inglés Corporativo. Entonces, eh, les invito a permanecer pendientes del grupo de WhatsApp porque ahí se va a indicar si vamos a estar el viernes o si va a ser también asueto. 
yo ahorita hasta el momento no sé si mientras estamos hemos estado en clase han escrito algo en el grupo principal eh, voy a tener que revisar así que de nuevo les invito a estar pendientes porque por ese medio se va a oficializar digámoslo así si va a haber clase el viernes o si no va a haber. Por lo pronto, eh, trabajemos en la plataforma, completemos toda la sección 3 y el midterm y nos vemos tal vez el viernes o tal vez el lunes. <ríe> ok. El lunes más seguro. Fin de semana largo. Lo más probable, lo más probable, pero, pero no lo puedo garantizar, así que no nos confiamos. Ok. Thank you, everybody, and good night. Good night, everybody. Bye bye. Bye.